Warning! Tube amplifiers have lethal voltages inside them. Please do not attempt to build, test, or repair these without understanding and following all safety protocols. Hey y'all! Well in this episode we're going to tear into cleaning up some of this wiring. The owner of this amp is okay with me straight wiring the output transformers of the speaker jacks and bypassing that headphone jack. And honestly, anybody that thinks using a 45 watt push-pull KT88 amp to listen with headphones, I think that's just a horrible idea. There's options that are so much better for using with headphones than trying to use the headphone jack on this amp, and I really think it totally screws up the way the grounding scheme on the output transformers work. I'm also going to start cleaning up the other grounds in the amp and I'm going to fix the heater wiring which is something that's driving me crazy looking at the way they did the heater wiring in this amp. And I think you'll agree at the end of this video the inside of this amp looks so much cleaner and the wiring is so much more thoughtfully laid out. also believe it's going to help make it sound cleaner. So Let's get busy on this part of the build. Okay, we're in the final stretch here, and in this video, we're going to be cleaning up some more wiring. And one of the things, this is entirely optional, but it just bugs me the way they did the heater routing for these output tubes. And over here on this side, you can see the original. It comes up and over, and then it wraps around this tube, which in itself is a no-no. You should never run the heaters around the tube socket like that. And then it daisy chains off and instead of just going across to the other tube, they come down, have it paralleling all this filtered DC wiring, and then back up to the tube. And this is high current, low voltage AC wiring that is going to make noise even with the pairs twisted like this and you want to keep this away from the signal and so I did this channel the way I feel is a much better way it might be kind of hard to see in this picture but it vertically comes up a couple of inches goes across and then to the two things it goes across the bottom of this tube then across here and across the bottom of this tube I'm keeping it away from the signal wire, the grid of this tube. Here's the feedback wire that's running at 90 degrees to it, and it should really help keep the hum away from any sensitive parts, and it's just a lot cleaner. This is 18 gauge solid core wire. So I'm going to go ahead and do this other channel, and I'm trying to knock this out. Uh, the owner needs this amp back, and I need to get this finished by this weekend. So I'm going to be doing a little bit of this work off camera. So I'm going to knock out this other side of the heater on this channel. Do the same thing, just the reverse. I also do not like how they run. This is the 6.3 volt wiring that goes up to the front end heaters. These two terminals here, the wire runs up across comes along here it's running parallel to the signal wires from the phase splitters to this board with again high current AC wiring that's powering up the heaters of five tubes and I don't know why they did that other than trying to make it look neat and just tying all the wires together so let me slide this down a little bit so I can show you better what I'm going to be doing here we're going to take this pair of heater wires, we're going to run them up the center, across, over, and then up to the back of this tube to connect the heaters here in the center and get it away from all this stuff over here. These coupling caps and, like I said, these wires coming from the phase splitter should not be in parallel with AC heater wiring. Just bad practice. But I'll show you that on camera. So let me go ahead and knock out the heaters on these two KT88s. And then I'll come back and show you wiring this up. And then we're going to get started on removing the headphone jack, all the crazy ground wiring they have with it, and start sorting out the grounding in this amp to a single star ground point. 
Okay, we got our super cool looking new heaters for the KT88s put in. The other thing to note, because we're going to be dealing with this grounding thing, and if you plan on following the grounding mods, you want to cut the jumper here that they have. I think they had it between pin one and this heater terminal on both these tubes. Get rid of that jumper. We are not grounding the cathode of the output tubes through the heater winding. That's the worst idea I think I've ever seen in an amplifier design. So we're not doing that. As you can see, I kind of routed this so that it's crossing the heater at 90 degrees and that way has the least possible chance of picking up any noise. Now we're going to reroute the heater wires that are going up to the front end and just come over here and clip these two wires that are coming up here to the heaters from the transformer and pull them out. Again, I've cut all these zip ties so I can this stuff will come loose. And we're going to route this wire just like this. And I mean, this wire is fine. I mean, I prefer using solid core wire, but in this case, I'm just going to reuse what's here. And we're going to pull this wire up. We're going to roll it around and connect it just like that up to these yellow and orange wires on this tube. So let me get this set up and I'll show you connecting those up and then we're going to go to working on the grounding. So this may be tough to get on camera and normally when I'm building an amp I install all the heater wiring before I do anything else. So coming back afterwards and redoing the heater wiring when everything else is in place is kind of a pain. But we're going to be attaching these two wires here that came from the transformer to this terminal and this terminal. And I got this bundle of wires kind of pulled back out of the way so I can, you know, get in here and solder this without melting any of this stuff that has to do with the remote control. So the first thing we want to do is come in and tin this wire so that these stranded leads don't like go flying everywhere when we're trying to do this. Like that. And let me zoom in here and see if I can show you this. And what you want is to leave a little blob like that on the wire so that when you hold it up against the terminal and put the soldering iron on it, there's some solder there and it'll melt all together and stay in place and you're all good to go. So let's solder these in place. And here you can see I've soldered the yellow wire in and now I need to come in and solder this red one just like that. Now we have the heaters run up through the middle of the amp like that instead of running around the world and being all mixed up with those signal wires. So that's it with the heaters. Again, that's kind of an optional thing, but I think that's a lot better following practice way of doing this. And now we're going to attack the whole ground mess that this amp has and delete the headphone jack, and I'll show you why. Okay, so time to dive into this grounding mess. And a lot of it, I think, is caused from the way they implemented the headphone jack. We're going to pull all this ridiculous headphone wiring out of this amp. Because what they've got going on here, the output transformers, this is the ground wire, it isn't coming over here to the speaker jack. It's running up to the headphone jack, and there's some little tiny points in here that then connect it to the ground when you're not using the headphones. And so you've got the return path of the ground for your speakers running through all this wiring up back and forth across the amplifier. It just, 
that's not the way an amp should be wired, especially a tube amp. So we're going to be removing the headphone jack, removing this wiring, and we're going to start over here in this corner where they've got this ground connection here to the chassis where they've got the safety ground connected to the signal ground connected to the body of the chassis right here and that is not what we're going to be doing the other problem with this is they've got multiple tie down points for the grounds instead of a common single star ground point and I always wire my amplifiers with a star ground and I'm going to bet that they didn't even scrape the paint off of this little lug before they bolted these grounds down. And let's see if I'm right. There it is. You can see right there. The safety ground didn't even really hook to the chassis. It's sitting on top of paint. So this one little wire here is where all of the speakers are grounded through. And it goes through probably about two feet of 22 gauge wire across the amp. So all you guys running these monster cables and you know I'll, I'll admit I use 12 gauge wire for my speakers but if you're running like these monster size you know five gauge wires or braided things or whatever just know when this headphone jacks in place that you've got at least a couple of feet of 22 gauge wire that the signal's going through. So here's one of our wires off the speaker connection and I was going to use these but given these are 22 gauge wires we're not going to be using them so I'm just going to cut these off. I was going to say I could use them for something else but we're going to have to melt the solder out of those terminals anyway so we're going to cut those off and then we're not going to need these signal wires going from the 8 ohm taps either. So we're going to cut both of those and just get all this headphone wiring. Get all that? Throwing that away. Okay, wow, we're already getting this area just cleaned up a lot more. So the next thing we want to do is come in here. Let me zoom in here again. And we're going to unsolder these terminals for the safety ground. We're going to clean this off. We're going to put a lug here, a solder lug, and run a single wire from this point to the safety ground. And that's the only thing that's going to be connected to this ground point here is the safety ground to the chassis to make sure that if for some reason, somehow, the chassis gets hot because something shorts to it it'll blow the fuse so let's get that safety ground hooked up disconnect these other grounds they have connected here and then start making a plan for start grounding this amp so the first thing we're going to do is come in here and unsolder this stuff they've got connected to the safety ground terminal and get that out of our way then the next thing we need to do well, that way we can, let's run that stuff just over here in the corner out of the way. And let me zip tie that stuff up so it stays like down there out of our way. Then we need to come in and I'm going to use a little Dremel tool and clean this off to get down to the bare metal so that the solder lug that we bolt down there gets a really good solid connection. And there you can see we're down to solid metal now and we got a nice flat spot there to put our solder lug that we're going to use to connect up the ground and you shouldn't have anything connected to this point other than the chassis and the safety ground you should not have your signal ground hooked to the chassis at this point this is a connection where you want to have a good mechanical bent over and crimped wire on both ends so that you're not just relying on the solder for the connection because this is the safety ground in the amp. And then we come in here. And 
solder this up. Come back and tighten the screw down. And as you can see, now we've got a really good solid connection between the chassis and the safety ground so that we know that in case something ever happens, there's no way if you're using a three-prong plug that the chassis can ever get hot. Now we can start working at moving all these other ground points up to the star ground point, which we're probably going to use this lug right here, which I'm also going to get the Dremel tool and flatten this down so we get a good solid connection there as well. And the reason I want to use that little Dremel wheel to do this is this is a cast-in lug and it's rounded on the top edge. And I want to make this nice and flat so that it gives a little purchase area for this tag strip that we're going to bolt down right here. Now one of the things I need to do is I want to come in here and solder a big fat wire across all three of these terminals to tie them together so all three of these will be ground points that we can hook the various things in the amp that we need to ground to this point. So let's go do that. Well I decided to edit this grounding stuff into two videos because it's probably going to be almost a 45 minute video to try to do this in one thing without editing out too much and so I decided again to split this up at this point though I have finished the amp as you can see it's not on my bench anymore it's up in the listening room and it sounds fantastic the coupling caps are still breaking in I know they're gonna kind of fill in the mid-range some after they run a few hours but I can already tell that this was a nice improvement first of all all the noise is gone and I know some of you are arguing like, though you're doing something wrong, mine doesn't have any noise. Well, great. The amp that I've got had some noise at half volume. Full volume, it was quiet. Zero volume, it was quiet. Half volume, I could hear a hiss, hum kind of a sound coming out of both the speakers with my ear up against them. Most people probably wouldn't even notice it. You get a couple of feet away from the speaker, you can't hear it at all even in a totally quiet house. So it's not a big problem, but it was there. The other thing that I ran into, some of you may have been following me from the start, this amp was doing weird stuff with my Fono stage that was admittedly a hand-built one, but it was doing wonky stuff that acted like a ground loop to me. It was actually picking up a country music radio station at night if you held the ground wire between the phono stage and the turntable like up in the air and I could move it around and got it quiet but there still was a tendency to try to pick up noise and hum which I've never had before with any of my other amplifiers now that I've redone the grounding all of that's gone doesn't even try to hum doesn't do anything weird and I'm convinced that this unconventional grounding that they did in this amplifier, especially could be the stuff with the headphone jacks, it could be some of those other loops that they had inside the amp were a problem. And, you know, if yours is quiet, great. Ignore this. But if you do have noise in yours or some part of your system or some of your auxiliary stuff that you're hooking up to it, whether it's a DAC or a phono stage or some other tube preamp or something, it's probably the grounds in this amp that are the problem. And it is not the way a tube amp grounding is supposed to be done. Go read Morgan Jones's book if you don't believe me. He's like the Bible on building tube amps and he explains how the grounding is supposed to be done and how Star grounding is supposed to be done. Valve Wizard's another online place you can go read about, you know, the proper way to ground an amp. This one's not done the right way. 
And I believe some of this is you just get into it with some people that they they seem to tie their personal self-worth into their purchase choices. And if you question the 100% best quality for the cheapest price choice, they get really upset. And if I'm going to upset some people, that's fine. I'm not going to beat around the bush and I'm going to tell it like I see it. And this is a really good amp for the twelve to fourteen hundred dollars that you're paying for this. It hits way above its pay grade, but it's still a budget audio product that was made to a price point, and they're trying to sell you a tube amplifier that should be worth three or four thousand dollars for half that price. And they had to cut some corners to get there, and some of the corners they cut were cheap resistors some of the engineering could use some help and i'm sure this is a schematic that somebody found online and they didn't have an actual electrical engineer design how this was going to be done and it shows when you look at the way they laid things out inside it so round two of this video we're going to be finishing up the grounding and connecting up all the speaker jacks and all that kind of stuff and finishing this amp up and then as a follow-up to these two videos, I want to put this thing on the scope and look at the global negative feedback and try adjusting that and see what that does to the square wave on a scope. So that's probably going to wrap this up. Like I've said a couple of times, owner wants his amp back. Don't blame him. We've had this thing for a while. And so we need to wrap this thing up. So... Hope you're enjoying this series. If you are, please subscribe. Please consider joining my Patreon. Got a donation page at my website if you found this valuable to you, especially if you're going to be doing these mods to your amp. And until the next video, have a great day.